I want to read in Matthew 28, 5 and 6. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. On the darkest day that ever dawned, the Lord Jesus was crucified. For more than 33 years, the Son of God had lived in this world, and yet he never sinned. He'd gone about doing good, giving sight to the blind, speech to the mute, hearing to the deaf, and then body to the crippled, and even life to the dead. He had preached the world's greatest sermons, and he had practiced what he preached. His life influenced men to rise up from their lowly death and do great things for God. He was the perfect embodiment of all that is good, high and noble and useful and godly. But they crucified him, thinking they could silence him forever. But this was God's purpose for his son to come and to die for the sins of the world. Now, when Jesus died, the hearts of those 11 disciples, they broke with sorrow. They had followed him. They had enjoyed his fellowship. They loved him with all of their heart. But now their hopes were dead. All their dreams have come crushing down to the ground. But notice something wonderful happened. They went to the tomb, and he was not there. The angel said, he's risen. Inspired by the resurrection and the fact that our Lord would be with them always, they went out and they gave their lives for Christ. Hundreds of years have gone by. We need to remember again, he lives. Not only does he live, but he loves. Not only does he love, but thank God, he will never leave us. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now where does Jesus live today? Well, first of all, he lives for his people are in need or in trouble. You see, their Christian life is no bed of roses. The Christians often have to suffer greatly. The Christian often goes down to the valley. But you and I need to remember, we're not alone. Jesus is always with us in trouble. He told us, he said, in the world now, you're going to have much persecution. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You may have some needs today, maybe financial, maybe family, maybe friends, maybe some foes. But remember today, he's alive to help you. He lives for his people are in need or in trouble. Secondly, Christ lives at the place of prayer. Uh, Some time ago, I read in this magazine about this fellow. He lived in El Paso, Texas, and he was almost nine feet tall. He had been seen by millions of people in the circus. But I'll tell you something today. When you and I get down on our knees and pray, we're tall than he is, amen? We're tall enough to touch the throne of God. You're never taller for God than when you pray. You know, the Bible said, men ought always to pray and not to think. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Well, he lives today where his folks are in need. He lives today at the place of prayer. And thirdly, 
He lives today along the place of Christian duty. Duty. That's a good word, isn't it? R.G. Lee said that duty was the most sublime word in the English language. You know, sad to say today, many Christians are missing life's greatest joy because they do not walk down the road of Christian duty. You see, the road of Christian duty is where he walks with us. You remember when that thing came in? They failed to meet God in the right place. God was there, but they were busy elsewhere. You know, we have a lot to do for God. And uh, we don't have a lot of time to do it. So, we ought to be about the Father's business. We ought to give. We ought to help. We ought to serve. We ought to do everything we can to the cross of Christ. And then we have a risen, living Savior. We can come to him for salvation. We can come to him for help. He's not only there to take us to heaven, but friend, he can help us live today. He set an example for us in his life. We may have sinned in the past, and I'm sure we have, but this risen Savior is here to help us today. He can take a lost person and make them new in Christ. He can take a backslider and make him happy in Christ. He can take a discouraged life and encourage them in Christ. He can change you if you allow him to do that. Yes, Christ, the Lord is risen, has come forth from the grave. He breaks the chains of death for you, and now he has power to save. You see, Christ's resurrection is the factor in salvation because it is a fact of history. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our faith. Without it, we have no hope, for this life is not, is not what we have in ourselves, but what we have in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. So I'll follow you today. Have a happy Easter. And may God bless you.